dice with the dice is right behind the dice on Tuesday night behind the dice with the dice is right behind the dice on Tuesday night it's behind the dice the your host smalls on Tuesday night but not them all just two a month because we all have prior commitments that means we might be busy or tired but we're here now <laughs> next song a Tom DeLonge's voice oh 100% God. I'm being bullied. Oh, <laughs> man, I love that AFK <laughs> square. Isn't what it the best? It's so good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Behind the Dice podcast. We are here tonight with Rattrap and Mosey, aka Zachary, um, talking about some crazy shit that I was not prepared for in the last session, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, first off, we have a couple of announcements. Um, oh. Remembering announcements. Uh, firstly, our music tonight is provided by the Welcome to Taldori soundtrack. You can find that um, on Spotify. It's a wonderful soundtrack from Critical Role. Lots of dope ass songs on there for campaigns or just listening to while you're driving in your car. Um, yeah. Secondly, Make sure you're following us on all of our socials. We are on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We upload videos all throughout the week on all of those. And if you are unable to catch our normal sessions Friday nights or our podcasts every other Tuesday, you can catch those. They are uploaded on YouTube every Monday and every Wednesday slash Thursday this week, depending on when it gets uploaded. I'm busy tomorrow, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and... Get in the fucking Discord. Get in the fucking Discord. Join it or I'll fight. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to see me cry. Yeah, because then I'll start crying and there'll be a bunch of people crying. Yeah. We got a bunch of cool free homebrew stuff, some cool D&D conversations, and also our announcements, which you don't want to meet. Oh. No, it's that's, that's not, not in, in there. there. Not but blurred out Yukon Corn Leon's wiener is in there that is uh, in there so with some photoshop skills so check it out yeah and um we are talking about the last uh session from this past friday if you do not want spoilers i would recommend staying here and hanging out but muting us so that way you do not hear the spoilers because that's what we are talking about tonight um spoilers yeah don't want to ruin that for anyone and Spoilers, Smalls isn't tall enough to reach her microwave, so she has to shove her hands up in the air to take a picture at head I knew as soon as it said you took a screenshot, I was like, he's taking a screenshot so he could be like, hey, look, you can barely see your head in the microwave. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> and he literally said that to me. Um, what else? What else? What else? There was another thing that I was going to say before we jumped in. Um, we are uh, champion. My friends. Um, okay, well, I guess it wasn't important. If it comes back to me, I will mention it later. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and jump in. First and foremost, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, as soon as the session ended, I was, I was not you feeling like great. Discord, right? I, I did. I did. <laughs> I was just like, so I like. I chopped someone's <laughs> arm off. What the hell? Why'd you leave? <laughs> I was unfortunately not feeling well, but as soon as we ended, I looked at Maxi and I was like, what did he do? <laughs> Maxi was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I had to fill him in. Mm -hmm. But oh my God. Um, I know that when we were discussing a little bit um, in DMs after the session, you said that that was something that you had planned for a long time. And I will be honest with you, in my head at the time, I didn't... I was having a hard time like connecting all of the pieces. And so when it was happening, I was like, oh man, because Devira was thinking about going into that room. And I was like, damn, does that mean if Devira went into that room, she was going to have her fucking arm <laughs> chopped off? Like, like, did I just save Devira from, from that whole scenario? But you had it planned for, how long did you say? Like several months or something. Uh, I like. think Zach approached me a 
few months ago. So basically, yeah, I don't want to go too deep into it because there's still some things that we want to cover in the game. But essentially, Zach came to me and he was just talking about things that he would like for slate to experience and his character progression and where he would like to, him to go so there's some still some aspects that we wanted to cover but one of the things he was like i think there's like a big loss that he could experience and one of the losses was the the losing of his arm so when he said that i was like what <laughs> so i i i took that and i was like okay so we had like a couple of close calls but i was like i think it makes the most sense to go into slate's backstory to go into this moment for this big bad guy to do something big for slate so that he can grow from this experience so i was had this whole scene in my mind and i was like it, i talked to some people after the session about it because rainy was freaking out she's like so you just take our, our like cut our arms off at any point like, just, <laughs> I, was <just> like, <laughs> I was like well yes and no i was like yeah i can i can but a real is like i don't think i would be as mean about it i think it would have, you'd have to put yourself in a really terrible situation for something like that to happen and to like fail a, a bunch of roles. monster yeah so <laughs> like, it, that thing almost did it to me i think the first time yeah uh, th that was like my checkpoint to make sure that was a road slate really wanted to experience and then so i was like got this whole all prepared um but for him it was like i knew it was something that he wanted slate to experience so i was just like I'm going to be really mean about this. So I haven't shown the <laughs> items. I haven't shown the spells that were used, but it kind of also showcased how powerful a character grudge is, which was really great because Slate didn't stand a chance. Like he got hit with a 27, I think, got restrained, has no idea how he got restrained with being hit. Then immediately after legendary action stunned him and then just knocked him out and took him away. I was like, yeah, you're out of there. <laughs> So if he wanted to escape there, pretty much someone had to go with him. And yeah. that person pretty much had to be Ignacio or Alea to teleport him out. Maybe Bray, but I wasn't putting Bray next to him in that situation. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm taking him. So <laughs> I know what's coming. Um, so I just, I, I was like, when he was by himself, I was like, this is a perfect situation. Launch the attack. And it also wanted i wanted it to be a very big kind of scare moment for you guys to be like oh shit they've been watching us they know we're strong and they've been preparing for this and they kind of flipped the script on us after we took down one of them they took one of us and we'll see where it goes from there i was so like i made the comment for the session before halloween and i was like oh this is like a great like it's spooky season, like we're going into um, Halloween the following week with the one shot. And then like, it's still for me, Halloween is like one of those times to where like pretty much until uh, the end of November, it's like still spooky season. So it's like, oh, this is super great. Like we're doing all this crazy shit with like zombies and stuff. And then that happened. And I was like, I feel like, like I've been watching a lot of um, a few of the YouTubers that I watch. They've been playing a lot of like newer horror games that are coming out and i was like i feel like i'm sitting here watching like a scene from like outlast or something or like until dawn like this is like <laughs> this is so next level like holy shit what is going on yeah well rainy nailed it because it was just like, i felt like arcane I'm like that that was the influence 100 percent. and i think it's i think it's cool to show your influences and when people can catch on to the influence and then you spin it in your own way so yeah i i, I like, like arcane i loved arcane and i was just like this feels like which a part kind of i mean i guess you'll see it's the more it goes on but um like arcane had that kind of like purple drug thing that they had that um was going around and was making people stronger so oh, oh. so that kind of influenced that yeah, yeah, that idea yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, it. I. I'm glad that the spookiness caught on, and I. I'm, I was really happy with how that all played out because I got to do everything I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, just wanted to hear what y'all were gonna say about all. That. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, I got a lot to say, but yeah, like, oh, say, say it. You... Say it now. <laughs> I don't know. Where, I don't even know where to start. Like, so a lot of people don't even know. Um, I don't even think anyone in the party realizes this. I probably should have said something, but it slipped my mind during the session. But um, Slate wasn't really growing 
as a rogue anymore. He didn't even uh level up that last session. He's still one level behind all y'all. So he was waiting he's waiting for something to um come along to like so he could uh what, what's the right word? He's waiting for Don't something spoil that, too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm not spoiling it. That's why I'm that's why I'm like yeah. stuttering. Like he, he just or... yeah, yeah, inspiration, another path something. But obviously, I mean, if you've been watching the campaign, you'd see he does pretty much the same thing over and over. And that's a good thing because it excites a character and a half. But he he's missing something. And so now this opens up a wide opportunity of him to grow in another way than what he has traditionally been doing the whole campaign. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But this is the event. Like there, there's so many things that could have happened. And if I'm being honest, I, when I mentioned, obviously he said, I mentioned like he needs some kind of loss or something to happen to like bring about this new path change, whatever. I was just kind of throwing out there as a joke, not really a joke, but like a kind of a joke halfway. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be mad if this happened about the arm getting cut off. And then by the time we got past the whole um, tentacle monster, I was like, oh, well, there is my chance for that to happen. It didn't happen. Great. Slate's not going to lose an arm. And <laughs> during this last session, when I got kidnapped, it's like, oh, cool. What's going to happen? I don't know. And then that also took me by surprise. I was like, oh, this is kind of sick because I didn't even expect to get my arm cut off right there even though I was the one that originally came up with the idea of like some kind of loss like that. And um, <laughs> during the set, I guess I don't want to spoil the session, so mute it. Well, you already got it spoiled at this point. But whenever you were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. What do you want to do? <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, I can't say anything. No spell. He's like, well, you can use something. I was like, I don't know. I'm reading through everything. And you're like, <laughs> call your sword. And I was like, why would I do that? You're like, just do it. I was like, all right, all right. I called my sword. You're like, ah, now I cut off your arm. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wanted me to call my sword. <laughs> that was great. It was, it was mostly for the imagery. I was going to do it regardless, but it was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. just, I wanted that picture of like one last try, one last connection to try and get and free. And it was great. And then yeah. it's just like, then you realize it's hopeless when you can't even hold on to the sword and it falls to the ground. And I was like, yep, here we go. Off, off with the, off with the old arm, but yeah. Uh, and now my first thought is I can't do two-handed attacks anymore. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> gotta oh, gotta no. figure something else out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's like I think Slate has one of the coolest character growth. I mean, everyone's got really cool character growth throughout the no, entire campaign. First, the um, but his being the when we were building <laughs> Slate's backstory. Me being a he genius. Was originally, and all. he was originally gonna be way creepier, and then oh, like, I was gonna I be like a murderer. Or or something. Yeah, and <laughs> then you're like, I don't want that for Slate. And then it kept yeah. being, he kept going to these organizations and kept being like, I don't want to do that bad stuff. And then like not even realizing that was kind of Slate's path. And then now he's the the chosen of the 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 polis, the the city's champion, and he's helping make cities better places and and rebuilding towns and stuff so it's crazy well, it was from supposed to be a, a criminal failed, and now he's yeah. the opposite of a criminal yeah, yeah from a failed thief to yeah. one of the most successful people in the continent so it's pretty crazy that's yeah that was pretty sick that's so oh my god i mean that to me that like makes it because obviously it was a really like it was a crazy moment an insane moment but it was like one of those like holy shit like this is some serious shit happening now but knowing that that was something that you wanted for the character i think makes it that much cooler because not there are not many people that are like put my character through the ringer please like i want my character <laughs> yeah. to be like borderline on their deathbed like crawling for their safety and shit like that like but i mean what am, i literally had a thought and it just left me i have um, a thought if you need me to it. jump in or you yeah. can continue oh i like the thought is i like i had kind of had a conversation with alex after the session and everyone left and he was like i've got some ideas for Alea, but i don't want to tell you what to do and i was like alex 
tell me what you want to happen because if you don't tell your dm what you want for your character then they won't know and then they won't be able to you know they might not do it in the exact way that you were expecting but for them to get to that point you want your character to be at your dm needs to have an idea of that so don't be afraid to be like i want this for my character and you can try and be specific and the dm can be like nah but it, you know it, for the most part they're going to try and make these things come about for your character uh you just have to tell them and and like, then we'll we'll find a path that works and that it doesn't feel like it's given to you that it feels like it's been earned yeah like dnd is a story and this is like the world you created and whatever and you're writing the core of the story but it's all the players making it too and they're all telling the story as well in their own way like everyone has their own role and stuff so like now slate's just this flamboyant penguin in a group of like <laughs> other characters doing their own thing but like we're all telling our own story and stuff so and yeah, that and also that's binds into the one story you're trying to tell yeah it helps bring the world to life really it makes it like i i with everything you guys have done it has made the world so much more exciting than like just like the base story points that i had with you guys in it it makes it feel a lot more alive yeah and i think that like also having that conversation as a player with your dm like that helps build that level of trust that you have with your dm to be like hey i have this cool idea for my character do what you will with it and then the dm takes it and kind of morphs it to where it's it's not like oh that's weird like why would this happen randomly at this moment like that doesn't make any sense but it works into the story and like gets the reaction like slate losing his arm because <laughs> i i want to go <laughs> i want to go back and watch that like clip of everybody's faces because i know i had a visible expression i, I was I sitting here your like face oh and i was God. like oh yeah we did good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i didn't see anyone's reaction i need to go and uh, watch the video that's on our youtube channel go follow our youtube yeah dot com go follow it um i think moments like that are really fun as somebody watching obviously but then also like the reaction that you have as a player because yes these are characters that we're playing in this game that we're playing but um the time and effort and everything that we've put into this campaign um like they're a part of you so it's like it, it almost feels even though it's not like it happening to us, it's still the same thing. Like it, it, you develop these relationships with these characters and you're like, Oh my God, like what the fuck was that? Like I is watching a movie or like a TV show and like these big moments happen. You have that, like that same feeling and it's really cool. And also very terrifying knowing what, I mean, I thought like, I thought what, it, what's the spell that you used on Ignacio when he died? Oh, power word kill. Yeah, yeah, that was another one. I'm like, this is gonna be so mean. <laughs> I thought but that I was scary. Scare the shit out of them. <laughs> I mean, that's like terrifying. But that's like, you know, for Davira, like, there's nothing that she could do at that point because she doesn't have like counter spell or anything. But like the thought of, like, oh, if she were there, like, maybe that would have been prevented. Obviously, you know, now I know it was predestined. But um, that idea of like. Holy shit, if things were slightly different, if we were just in a slightly different spot at that moment, like maybe it would have, it's just, yeah. I'm, uh, when everything is settled in that regard and everybody's back together, I'm, I cannot wait to see the reactions of everybody in the party when it comes down to it. Oh, next session's gonna be something. So Friday night, <laughs> We're all come hang out and <laughs> see how it uh, unfolds. I can't. I just still like the. I do have to ask because I loved the voice that you had, and then I got to thinking <laughs> like my pain voice. <laughs> I was literally like, who? I this voice is someone. This voice, and then like two days ago, I was like. Oh my god, is Bane? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. I was like, he's got a mask on. What should his voice be? I'm like, well, who's got the coolest mask voice? Not Jim Carrey. <laughs> I mean, his is good, but uh, yeah, Bane. Yeah, that's. Oh, it was so good. 
the entire time I was sitting there, like this perfect amount of creepy while also being like extremely unsettling. Cause if you heard like a random person just talking like that, you'd be like, oh, okay. But like the setting of everything, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I literally practice that voice in like the shower and I'm like, because I'm like, that's the time I feel like no one can hear me just like talking and walking in my apartment. But maybe the people right beside me are just like, what the fuck <laughs> is he talking about in the shower? <laughs> so, um, yeah, my neighbors probably think I'm crazy. That's okay. Was that grudge or uh, Clechius? That... that was grudge. Grudge, that's what I remembered, but I didn't know if I remembered wrong. That's kind of crazy. So we haven't even like seen the whole hierarchy yet. We've just only gotten a little taste of the Lords of the Underworld. For all You've that. gotten pretty much the bottom and the top is what you got there. So uh, yeah, I'm excited for this entire quest arc. Yeah, me too. Like, yeah, it's going to be so good. I felt bad because when we started the campaign, we started off with like my backstory and stuff. And then we've been doing so much of like looping around, making sure everybody gets to do something related to their character. And I feel like we finally made the loop back to Slate. I'm like, ooh, we get to continue on. <laughs> it's so been a while. So, yeah, I was yeah, excited to get back to it. And, like, we started it off with a bang. So it, oh, well, it, was, yeah, it was exciting. It was, uh, <laughs> that was pretty crazy. So I don't know if this is information that can be disclosed or not. But I'm going to ask anyways, just in case. Um, so Grudge is from Slate's backstory. Or no. Kind of. Uh, so Slate had... Um, Slate, uh, you've explained this to the party, right, Slate? Yeah, I've, I've told my backstory. Yeah, Slate, okay. uh, whenever you I did the whole it. voice change, I... Um, this is the voice change. I remember my old voice. That was... Uh, <laughs> that was something. But yeah, I'm pulling up my um, character sheet right now, but Grudge was, I believe, a part of just a named character in my backstory every my whole backstory was very vague because i didn't want to get into too much detail and it was a lot longer but like ryan said earlier slate originally was just like a murderer he was like a follower of like Erebos, and he just wanted he couldn't he had to kill he just had to and now like obviously slate's nothing like that but um we I cut that match. before we went into the game and changed it to a, just like a thief that kept going to these underground organizations. And then when it came time to either kill or get the, the bad goods, he was just like, this is bad. I can't do this. And then he just ran or like set them back a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead into more details, uh, Zach. Oh, well, apparent. Oh, it's misspelled grudge. There we go. Um... Yeah, so Grudge was someone that Slate's even run into before. But it was never like they personally did anything together. They were just... Slate told everybody about a ship burning down that he burnt down. And it was um, one of the ships. Um, it was the Ferryman. And that was Clecius's ship. And Grudge was on that ship inspecting shipments and stuff to make sure it had everything which turned out to be i think we learned it was like poison that they were trying to yeah that's like all that. the lords that's of the underworld's thing. like big thing is poison they they deal in poison as you guys yeah. are learning so <laughs> clecius grudge they were both there the day the slate burnt down that entire ship in alisari and so they're both familiar with slate but slate only got a glimpse of um clecius and like heard grudge and was hiding in the crates whenever Grudge was like inspecting everything, but they've never, this is their first time meeting face to face. I'm pretty sure Grudge and Slate. Yeah. So he's kind of just, pretty cool moment. he's kind of just been like, you scorned them. So yeah. they kept an eye on you. Um, it seems like they're the smart you. ones. Like everyone else has been trying to get back at me physically and right away, but these these people have literally been studying our party, following our movements, and planning out everything to, like, a T. Well, that that's one of the things that they brought up in the episode was pretty much they let you run rampant around the continent after you seeing what you did with the Wild Rats gang. They're like, uh -huh. okay. And then you just kept taking down underground organization after underground organization. And instead of being like, oh, this is bad, they were like, oh, 
this is a lot of room for us now. And mm. so his first action was now taking you. So we'll see where yep. that goes. But <laughs> it was very much like, huh, let's not do the same thing that everyone else did. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Worked I'm out excited. for them because we probably, we uh, the first person we confronted, we killed like one of the lords of the underworld to cook. And so everyone else being slow about it, I mean, that was the move apparently. Otherwise, we probably just would end up killing them. <laughs> Try to fight us head on. Yeah, I mean, you guys have proven that you're strong, so they gotta they gotta fight how they can fight to figure out how to beat a godly champion. Not just one, an entire group of them. There you go. And a frog and a fisherman. And frog. It's also crazy to me the fact that that there can be so much fear instilled in godly champions without like i mean i don't know how like um if that would be something that they would even pay attention to like the group of them or anything but um like yeah we can take you and we can do this crazy shit too like like oh my god because most i feel like um most interactions are like ah this is a winnable fight like this is easy but there there were some moments where i was like during that fight last session where i was like um i don't know this hurts. how this is going <laughs> well we went in there without a rest like all of our spell or most of our spells i don't know why i had no yeah. spell slots maybe i you like how many spells did i use? like what did we do that day other than the whole drug debacle in the race i don't know Honestly, I can't remember. I think I might. I I, honestly, I might have like forgotten to take a long rest to reset my spell slots. But I was like, "Fuck it!" Like we're going in, however it is, because I can't remember. So yeah. Um. But yeah, but, like I didn't really have anything. We still held our ground pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's another thing, which is a very cool DM moment. Is for a party, you know, I also want to see you guys succeed, but also it's very cool when you guys have had found so much success and then suddenly you lose or have a moment of loss yeah. and that fear comes back and you're like, oh, you can actually lose in this game. So yeah. there, there haven't been a ton of those moments in this campaign, but when they've happened, they've been pretty big and pretty memorable, I think. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. thing we have to remember too is that like, Everyone heard what happened to Slate, but all of us heard. The characters still don't know. So, like, yeah. where we left off, like, all the characters like, oh, well, hope he's okay. Like, we went in to look for him, but we couldn't find him. Don't know. Like, they're still kind of confused, even though everyone else, like, in person was shocked or whatever. Like, we still got to see what happens um, on the next episode where they're just like, what do we do? We're down a person. Is he dead? Is he not? We don't know. Yeah, it was we very much like a phones. where the fuck is he like yeah. what happened because yeah. like you couldn't see much because of the poison gas you had to leave yourselves and then you have a horde of zombies and it's just like what yeah. <laughs> like just no communication so it's it's very confusing and obviously i think all the characters would want to be like we have to look around we have to look around but in that moment I had to create kind of some urgencies with the the reachers coming forward and just like that room was still filled with gas so there wasn't really much mm -hmm. you could do to go back in there at that time yeah yeah i think devira escaped with like maybe six hit points I was like, the second he says that it's my turn, I'm booking it. I'm getting the <laughs> fuck out of here. I can't stay down here another round. I think, um, yeah, I definitely like moments like that because, um, like, I'm pretty sure you just said we've also had this conversation multiple times before, but it's very easy to kind of get within the characters, like, get kind of God complexes because we go around and we kill everything that we have to. And, and we have moments where we can decide like the fate of somebody. Whereas in those moments where it's like, Oh shit, like we don't always get to make all the decisions and we're not, we're also like in this moment, like struggling very hard to stay alive. It kind it's of brings back that. It's interesting you bring that up because the start of that episode was literally Slate tying someone up, knocking them out, waking them up, waterboarding them, torturing them. <laughs> and at the end of the episode, he's the one tied up, getting his hand cut off. Like, 
I you warned you the forget. whole time. Yeah. I gotta say, <laughs> yeah. you're smiling now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because now it, it literally just now clicked that, like, I, I mean, we did get that. Like, it's a hero complex, god complex, whatever. Like, we're we're invincible. And then all of a sudden, started the episode, ended the episode, just literally inverted. I'm the one in the chair. I'm being tortured. There goes my hand. Like, it's yeah. kind of crazy. I didn't realize that. Oh. I think moments like that are really cool. It just puts oh, yeah. everything back into perspective for, I mean, like you said, the characters don't currently know, but um, for me as a player watching, like there are moments where I'm like, oh, this feels like, I don't want to say easy, but it feels like, you know, it doesn't have the same like impact as when we were fighting um, like Megara's dad, for example, where it was like, this is completely unwinnable. Every fight after that has kind of, I've compared it to that, like, oh, we've been close to having a few people go down or like a few people did go down, but it was not to that same extent of like, we need to, like, our only option here is to run and having moments like that um, throughout the campaign definitely helps put everything in a perspective of like, hey, just because you're this level and you have all these cool spells doesn't mean that you're unkillable. Or yeah, let me tell you, high level characters, I'm like, how the fuck do I deal with you guys sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> and for this one, it was very much like, okay, this fight is like, because that the fight against the cook probably didn't feel like it was that tough. There wasn't that much going on. And, it, yeah. and I was like, that's what I kind of want this to feel like. I want it to feel like, oh, yeah, you guys are strong. And then flip that switch after you've expended a bunch of stuff, like easy win, champions in big grave. Here we go again. And then just to, rip the carpet out from under you it was it felt really nice <laughs> i'm sure it did <laughs> i like seeing you guys win too but doing having those shocked moments when you're like shit it's a it's a cool experience too that's what i struggle with whenever i'm doing those one shots is that like i'm always thinking i don't want to make someone too powerful but even at level like what what were y'all six or seven um yes yeah, y'all are still just like holding your grounds like a champ like i don't even I don't well you know. also didn't realize you get three legendary actions around <laughs> yeah i'm still learning how to dm but even <laughs> like just being the on the other side like i mean P pcs are they're strong like even at lower levels they're yep. strong so i can't imagine like higher levels like fighting them and stuff you really gotta um you can't be afraid to just fight them like to actually give them a fucking chance yeah. to die or whatever not die but you know die <laughs> yeah it is also i think urgency is a big part of it too because if characters are allowed to long rest and then jump into the battle at full strength with all their spells and stuff you're like goodbye <laughs> like, yeah. you're you're taking this down no problem with the combos you guys could pull off so it's mm -hmm. a it's a lot of management and stuff so it's there's a lot going on a lot of moving parts but you know it's how things have been playing out has been a lot of fun and i look forward to seeing how you guys grow past level 12 and whatnot and what you can pull off that's why that, this fight was memorable for me because i didn't have anything yeah like, it was just a sword it's like, well, got, I can't shield. Uh, well, can't Alex shield is saying to me, you, you got one last kill with that sword arm before it was Oh, that's true. Removed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are they going to do with my arm? We don't know. That'll be kind of crazy. Just slap you with it. You can slap <laughs> why you hit yourself. Why you hit yourself. <laughs> That'll be good revenge. It'll be kind of cool, though, given the... Well... I guess, honestly, it would be, uh, given the fact that we have an Ignacio, to see, like, because Slate and Ignacio obviously already come up with some crazy-ass ideas for equipment and weapons and shit. So after the the dust settles and, like, the, the shock is kind of over, everybody, like, adjusting to um, the new, new Slate, um, I imagine it will be like literally no time before Slate and Ignacio are scheming some kind of way to to utilize the lack of an arm <laughs> like like oh maybe you, you can but, well I mean yeah 
<laughs> he's going to but survive. Spoiler. That's what I was about to say. You're assuming I'm going to make it. One of the first people you guys met was Sarathos, and he had a, has a crossbow arm. So I'm sure you guys yeah. need to oh, come shit, up with something. True. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll be. Oh my god, I'm, cool. I'm gonna be able to be. Uh, I'm gonna walk up to Sarathos and just show him my arm or lack of an arm. And he'll be like, oh, look at that. Hey, who do I talk to about this? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, now you got to start thinking of characters that I like work with, uh, replacing limbs. If well, I Yarvor out. built that for Sarathos. That's where he was. Yarvor thought. did. Yeah, he's an artificer. Oh. He oh. he builds shit. That's kind of cool. I like that. I'm gonna talk yeah. to Yarvor after if I make it out. He it. he's built a bunch of inventions. Like he's got like automated turrets around Midgrave. He has uh ships that kind of circle around the lost uh islands to have try and get. Have you seen any of that? Uh, I think early on it may have been mentioned, but um, we haven't really like looked or yeah. talked about it. Or, like we so haven't originally. To do that. So I think the reason that the ships wasn't talked about was because you guys found Bray. So if you guys uh, went to Yarvor, he'd be like, "Oh, it just happens that we're coming up with this new tourism attraction to show oh people Lake Miros." <laughs> that was that was essentially the idea. Because I was like, "How the fuck do I get you guys over there?" And then yeah. McGarrow Ma was like, "This is my new boyfriend, who's a fisherman." And I'm like. You know, that wasn't even on purpose <laughs> to keep you guys in my day. <laughs> That's funny. So good. Um, one question that I did have in regards to kind of the progression of last session. Because um, I know, obviously, when you have like an end goal as a DM, you're not trying to like railroad your players into like following a specific path maybe and when i say maybe i mean not at all because you definitely are like a complete mastermind when it comes to dming uh because you let us think that we are in control of a lot of situations and you're just like making suggestions little suggestions with the npcs <laughs> um if because you had like the tailspire map and everything so if we did not catch the gnomes and like get the information from them and stuff like what i don't know if this is something that you want to share or that you even thought about but like what what would have happened because i feel like us <laughs> catching them getting that information was how we were able to progress like maybe if somebody else would have gotten the information at some point and like told us or well, you guys would have had to colossally fuck up to not catch the gnomes. They, they're stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, but, I mean, they were trying to fly away. So unless you guys were rolling ones and missed a whole bunch or something, then sure, they could have escaped. But, I mean, um, I really wanted to give that first mid-grave type of feel when you guys walked into town. And you're like, there's so many places we can go. or so many different avenues we can do, so many quests we can do. So I was like, kind of started you off with like two starting points that you could have taken you guys decided to go to river's end um you could have gone to the markets but you you went that way so it there were there were possibilities to do whatever and i'm sure you guys would have thought of some kind of idea to maybe get you back into action um there there's not necessarily a plan at that point but the setting is set so if you guys go the right way or ask the right question i'm sure you would have found some way to figure out how to catch the gnomes or find another way to find one of the lords of the underworld hmm. so it's like the skyrim alternate start we need to choose two uh two different locations to kick off the story and yeah or new world where you start in different provinces oh yeah, fun yeah, game. yeah, yeah 50 percent yeah. off oh not you know, anymore i think that sales <laughs> over sorry guys this is a bit of a sidebar <laughs> but i didn't this ever go to monarch's monarch's bluff until like last week so that means i've been playing new world for over a year there's a whole entire territory i didn't even that's my it. home <laughs> oh really yeah. like, oh, look, that's a castle here. That's so yeah. cool. i'm pretty that's, sure that's I where i started there. on yeah. this one yeah oh my god anyway sidebar we'll yeah. talk about that one later <laughs> um what else what else i did not make notes because in my head i was like there's just so much to talk about i don't need to write anything down because like i mean we've I, had we had some good good talking points yeah, because there was so much to unpack from that episode. Well, like, we're in a new town, and so far, we decided to explore drugs because that's the way that our party rolls. Oh, yeah, there's and drugs and zombies in town. 
our yeah, party. That's the way that our party rolls. Totally not just Slade and Ignacio that are like, drugs, 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 yeah. drugs. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Mrs. Pocket Dog. Sorry, there's a lot. Of well, I'm not even responsible for that. I wasn't there. <laughs> I make see what hey, you're responsible <laughs> for the AFK curse. There you go. Um, I mean, one thing to kind of talk about is Arlo, the the imprisoned um, old captain that brought you guys to the war summit, because that would have going to be a very interesting starting point. Um, if you guys, because the ships were coming in at the war summit to kind of save you and get you to escape. Um, from Torath when Torath was doing his rage. But mm -hmm. Arlo that entire time had this fireball bead. And so when you guys jumped on the ship, Arlo was going to go to Slate and be like, take this. It will teleport you back to safety quicker. And then have you just try and squeeze it and explode. And if he got knocked unconscious at that point, Arlo was going to try and bring him back to Alisari right away. Oh, uh, damn. So Holy he was shit. You killed so Ignacio. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was killing someone regardless. So I was oh, going to bring you down two people. Two. Yeah. So oh my God, if you took out Ignacio and Slate and would go. Oh, my yeah, God. Well, you something. you would have been in the same situation um, if you got brought to Alisari, but you guys wouldn't have done the Arcandust Mines first, probably. You would have headed to Alisari right away mm -hmm. to try and... How many sessions was Arcamine? Like, sidebar uh, about questing? About six to eight. I can't remember. Six to eight sessions of a yeah. whole side... That's crazy. Easy. Yeah. That was fun though. That was War back for to our the future and, uh, <laughs> season. Is, Darkest uh, timeline. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. It was. But I mean, it's it's hard to picture that we're still like we're still in the war for our Torin. Like it, it's we. I don't know how this is all gonna fit in, but we know like obviously Lords of the World are gonna be like a almost like a mini boss coming up to the big boss, but. Yeah, I, I set it up very much like uh, Dragon Age Origins slash Dragon Age Inquisition, where there's a big fight in the future, but you guys aren't ready for it. Even Mass Effect 3, Bioware games in general. Mm -hmm. So there's a big fight coming up and you guys have to get all of your forces ready. So you're going to all of these things that you're calling side quests side quests but there's big things happening there so there's yeah. big mm -hmm. bosses and there's big moments to be had in each of these sections to get all of your stuff ready and then suddenly you'll be at the front lines when you're ready to go and then the war will be a lot more prevalent at that point but and leading up to that point it's going to be a lot of just whispers in the distance of what's happening like you heard Alea's dad got kidnapped by assassins and then the front lines haven't moved very much but um and then Dasakari one of the cities was evacuated but Dankus was kidnapped so there's like things in the background but those will become more prevalent as you start to push your forces forward mm -hmm. yeah which we went from Dyad to Alisari so what we're moving slowly but surely west right like yeah, so there's four main points for you guys to do. There's the, yeah, you did Dyad, Alisari, excuse me, and then there's Braxia, and then uh, Megadarum, which is the, excuse me, Dwarven Cities, which is very close to the front lines. Megadarum's the mountain still, city? Yeah, it's like underneath the mountains. mountains. Yeah. yeah. So well, you we haven't do even them. heard or done anything with like either Braxia or uh, Megadarum, so that'd be kind of yeah. cool. Hadn't even done anything with Alisari yet, so it was all all totally yeah. new. Dyad for me, I feel like I feel one. like I know Alisari. That, yeah. It's the weird you do part. A like, little bit. I know, but it feels like I've been there, which just like has been there. But it feels like I've seen it. We've played there before, but we haven't, and I, it's kind of cool to be there now, finally, and like, yeah. not just be in my head about it. Like I'm actually seeing it and going through it. Yeah, it's very cool bringing that history now to the present, um, mm -hmm. seeing it all come come to life. What are like, what comparison would you make between, like, Dyad and Alisari? Because mentally, when I envision Dyad, it's like this huge, glorious city. And I don't know if Alisari has Size parts that... or... Just, like, the overall... Because I know, like, at least um, the parts of Alisari that we've explored so far are, like, the the rougher parts. Yeah. Um, um, Alisar is probably the second biggest city in all of Dyad. It's probably about half the size of um, Dyad, but it's you know, it, Dyad's like a the like a technical 
Marvel, like they're they're living in the future in this fantasy realm. And a lot of that has been pushed forward to Alisari, where they have this kind of aqueduct system moving through the whole town so everyone can have this enchanted, purified water come to them. Um, you've been in the more rougher side of town, so you haven't really seen that, but it's also uh, very market and merchant heavy with the amount of ships that come through. So you have that mm -hmm. kind of entire beachfront dock area where you have all of the Navy on one side training and preparing for war. And then on the other side, you have trade uh, and all of these giant ships coming in. So um, that's that's kind of the description but it's also called the gateway to our tour and you have like these huge buildings where like, one of them is a giant literal gate out front that you walk through to kind of get into this city and then you just see the busyness of like chariots and whatnot running through the streets and then you look to your right and suddenly there's this giant lighthouse towering towards the sky um lighting up the the sea in front of it so it's it's very much also a technical marvel it's just not quite at the scale with Daya. Daya just introduced their floating train and they have that flying island above to kind of just show off because, you know, they're the ones that get the Ark and Dust first, right? So mm -hmm. they have all of the schools and stuff and Alisari is more focused on trade and Navy and stuff. Um, but they still have a lot of cool stuff within the city. I think like in my head, that's kind of what I was envisioning. Um, I, I'm really bad with like making comparisons just so that way I can be like oh see I know this and this are like this and this from this other thing so like example like when I was thinking about it I was like oh it kind of makes me think of like Dyad is the capital from Hunger Games and then like um Alisari would be district one or district two yeah. to where they're not a, like as fancy but okay yeah yeah I saw it's, it as like oh Dyad being this glorious wonder, like pure city, whatever, all the technological advancements, and then Alice Sorry being like the underdark, some like crime city or whatever. But <laughs> all, I, I guess all that Slate has known is just the ferryman from Alice Sorry, or not the ferryman, the um, yeah, and kind Ozone of the dark. So yeah. yeah, and like there's definitely dark spots in Dyad, and there's dark spots in Alice Sorry. It's just been more prevalent in Alice Sorry because that's the first place you guys really went to. Yeah. But it's it very much has when you go to the markets, it it would probably have that overwhelming feeling that you guys kind of had when you first experienced Dyad. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you guys have experienced that big city boom. So now everything after that, you're just kind of like, yeah, we we tackled the biggest one, so this is fine. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, everything else seems not as overwhelming. Um. Yeah. I want to see some like navy battles and stuff. I want to see like a be... lot of big ships and. <laughs> well, you guys do have a war you're preparing for, so I'm sure uh, there's something, including Devira sky would like ships to being see freshly those. made. Well, sky ships, Devira wouldn't mind being on. Devira does not want to be on a ship while it's at battle out at sea. That would not be. That's not her thing. She's not interested. <laughs> Fucking Kraken just comes up and swallows you. <laughs> Bye, oh my Vera. God, a Kraken fight would be so much fun. Oh no! Don't, don't give him ideas. Work. Don't give him ideas. Oh, I'm sure he's already thought of that at some point. Like, our... it's bad enough we get attacked by dragons semi regularly when we're on ships. Like, you can blame Yurks for that. He freed the dragons. So. Oh my god! I know. Can't even oh yell god. at him. Cause he's gone. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> he had a he had a good in memorandum, so he's yeah. resting and also training now in the afterlife. So you know he's doing all right. Yeah. Go watch our one shot of something of River Fallen Yerks. Shield. There it is. <laughs> River Yerks. <laughs> the rise of Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are some good characters. I like them. Oh yeah. I feel like all of our one-shot characters are are pretty uh, spectacular. Yeah, they're great. Um, alrighty. Well, I think that covers everything that I wanted to discuss tonight. Unless you guys have any final thoughts or anything you want to talk about. See where this goes in episode fifty-four this Friday. Yeah. That was an ad. <laughs> Um, still cannot remember the thing that I was trying to think of, uh, earlier. Oh, well, uh, so we, the plan moving forward, um, with the podcast is obviously we're going to have moments like this where we're talking about specific episodes, 
with specific people um, in regards to their characters. Um, but if you guys have any ideas for topics that you would like to have discussed on the podcast or even some things that you would like to see in our weekly posts that um, we post on all of our socials, uh, join the Discord and let us know. Give us some ideas. You know, we'll try. Can't promise that we'll get to, to the suggestions. But um, if we're looking for something and it kind of meshes in there, you know, we could be talking about the thing that you suggested. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you guys so much. Do you have... I don't know if we have any events or anything. Uh, we got Lord Bert Bert. Thank you for the reset for 13 months in a row. And thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much for your support. We appreciate and love you all. We will see you back here Friday night. You better be here Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm not converting for other time zones because that's not my job. So um, what's, what's central? Smalls was like, uh... <laughs> Stop it! No, seven minus one is six. Don't out me! <laughs> uh, yeah. We love you guys. Have a lovely rest of your evening, and we, we'll see you guys on Friday. Bye! Bye.